Hello guys, Shadow Sabba here, and today I'm doing another episode on Amphibia, guys. Today I will be reviewing two of my favorite episodes of season three, guys. A great way, in my opinion, to come back to Amphibia after half a season in er, on, on Earth, which is really nice, guys, because sometimes, like, Amphibia has done a few things that I didn't like in this time on Earth, so I'm glad they finally came back to Amphibia. Another thing, guys, this is much later than my usual reviews, which is not usual for me. The episode wasn't really out there for a while. I don't know why, but who knows, guys. Either way, very interesting episode. One of my favorites of season three. Let's begin. We start off with Anne and the Planters coming to Amphibia after what we saw last episode in Escape to Amphibia. And then basically looking around and seeing all the destruction to Wartwood and everywhere else in Amphibia. But as they're going through the houses, they are met by this gigantic centipede-like creature with a weird band around its body. This monster then proceeds to attack Anne and the planters. After seemingly being knocked down, the monster comes back and continues to attack Anne and the planters. Another side note, guys. Very interesting how Polly beat this thing up. Like, it was really weird, guys. It, like, she had more power than usual. By the way, guys, we are met with these shade shaded figures, guys, who save and the planters by taking this monster down. Only revealed to be Wally, uh, is that his name? I think it is. Um, Miss Croker and Loggle, who's surprisingly buff, who apparently has been working out since Anna's gone. And of course, guys, this couldn't be a good amphibia episode without Sasha coming back, greeting Anne and the planters. And after finding out that the Planter's House is the safe house for everyone, nicknamed the Resistance, um, and Amphibia fighting against Andreas, we find out they're using the basement, the secret um, Planter tunnels we found all the way back in Season 1. Like I said, guys, one of many really good callbacks. We're met with a society of new and old faces, some from Newtopia, some just w frogs we've seen around. Sasha basically explains what's gone on since Anne left, and one very interesting thing, she explained to the monster from before, which attacked Anne and the planters, has a mind control thing. And I believe, which is further supported later on the episode, it's from the Mushroom Spore, all the way from the end of season one, the, I believe, right before the season finale, which Hot Pop used to mind control all of the planter family, including Anne. Sasha basically explains to Anne that they're going to be working together because Marcy's captured and all. And she decides to give over leadership to Anne, which is mostly the point of this episode. But because of how Amphibious changed, Anne doesn't really want to lead. But yeah, so like I said before, when my idea of it from the mushroom is further supported when they talk about it's actually inside the mind control ring, or whatever you want to call it, around the centipede's neck. And also a recurring theme is the planters seeming soft now, coming back to the amphibia, like Hot Pop realizing how dirty amphibia is and wanting hand sanitizer, and Missy's electric toothbrush in Earth, in on Earth. Grime, friend, more friendly than normal, is slightly annoyed that Sasha gave away control, seeming as, at, like Anne, thinks she's not really ready for this since amphibia changed, and also since he doesn't want to be demoted again. So long story short, guys, Anne basically goes around, kind of messes stuff up with her plans and her intuition. Just showing more that Sasha's a better leader and making Anne a bit more nervous about herself being leader. Even though earlier Sasha said that she's done with all her mind controlling, manipulation, all that stuff, because Sasha will not take back the helmet that basically shows that you are the commander and starts to think that she may be manipulating her to make her fail on purpose because she will not take back leadership. But one giant snake eating everyone later, Sasha finally reveals to Anne why she will not take back leadership because she says last time she did, she destroyed their friendship. And trying to help Sasha realize she is still the better leader, decides to get herself eaten along with the rest of the planters to let Sasha finally have to take control. Sasha opens the monster's mouth, Marcy style, and gets all the planters and other parts of the resistance out. Sasha continues to give good um, commands to all of the different resistant members, allowing them to finally defeat this giant snake. After which, another callback, they get to use boom shoes to blow up different parts. And just look at Polly's eyes. Polly, Polly just loves destruction. It's precious. So after finally destroying the place the snake came from and the snake from before getting the collar knocked off, they all basically go home, back to their resistance hideout, and just talk about their issues while giving 
reasons why Sasha should continue being the commander, even with Anne here. But then, guys, the biggest reveal of the whole show, Anne lost their shoe again, which is just why Anne, come on. And, guys, the next episode, Sprivey, which is the second part to this episode, isn't as as action-packed as the last one, but it's still a very good episode. Mostly just exploring Sprig and Ivy's relationship, which is very annoying, and they make a very good point of showing how annoying it is. They annoy the other villagers. Now, it's a very simple episode, though, guys. Also, here as well, like I said, many references. Like, on the right side, you can see the person who tracked, the bounty hunter who tracked down them in season one, and the guy who got really angry about donuts. He was, like, a new villager there. It's it's very, it's from season one, guys, a long time ago. By the way, yeah, they're annoying. <laughs> So Sasha basically explains what they have to do, take out this place so they can have some people come through and deliver resources to the resistance. After they say who needs to go on the mission, the fun part is that they literally uh, have Sasha, Sprig, Ivy, and the person from the restaurant. I forgot his name. And of course, this new, new frog. I don't know why I said of course. There's this new frog who helps them out, who we've never seen before. Who may become a new character, seeing as they did give her a voice actor. Either way, with everyone else gone, Anna Graham literally just decide to throw a pinata party. Which, shocker, doesn't become some super good B-plot. It literally just stays with this A-plot the whole time. So, Sasha splits them up all into different teams, but Sprig and Abby are not together. So, they devise a plan to end up being together to finish this job. Now, the rest of the episode's not too complicated, so I could probably just run through it in, like, a minute. They make a fake note telling everyone that they need to split up into different teams and Ivy and Sprig should be together. Though Sprig and Ivy are able to get to the force field where they're going to need to destroy the thing inside of it afterward, the other two aren't able to get to the force field. And slowly they realize, you know, they see why Sasha paired them up with who they did. This whole thing Sasha sees make her only a little... <laughs> A little furious with them for breaking the mission and allowing the person to come through with their resources. It was actually Wally's father, I believe. Very interesting. And then I remember that the rest of Wartworth doesn't actually know about Wally's. So they ask if that actually looks like him. And that's pretty much it for this week, guys. Very interesting episode. A nice way to get back in the swing of things in Amphibia. And I'm very excited for next week. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a nice day.